Good morning. Coming up, the latest on the story. You've also been covering the situation at Burning Man. Thousands of people are stranded after monsoon rains turn the desert into mud. The conditions this morning as authorities investigate one death. And the urgent manhunt for a convicted killer who escaped from a Pennsylvania prison. Authorities released surveillance video they believe to be him outside of a home. Plus, we have your back to school checklist. Our experts are helping both parents and kids get ready to head back to the classroom. It's all coming up right here on GMA. And don't worry, we're not going to GMA just yet. Ahead in our next half hour of GMSA, 16 year old tells us a weight lifted off her shoulders after the Crown Act became law over the weekend, what it means for so many across the state, at schools and in workplaces. Plus an emotional tribute to the mother of a Rob Elementary shooting victim. That's still ahead all before 7 a.m. And up next, lawmakers on Capitol Hill racing to avoid a possible government shutdown by the end of September. We're gonna explain what is going on in just a few moments before we head to break. Roads are clear right now. We know a lot of people traveling, a lot of people trying to run errands, a lot of people putting the brisket on the grill. If anything pops up on the roadways, we will keep you posted. Right now in GMSA, San Antonio police are investigating a shooting just north of downtown. What they're saying now about the suspect. Well, used for a convicted killer on the East Coast. This convicted killer escaping from prison. We're going to look at how he got out and what's happening now. 79 degrees to start off your Labor Day Monday morning. It's going to be another triple digit day. Sarah Spivey will have our forecast and if there's any end for these triple digits, I don't know, the next week or two. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. Happy Labor Day to so many people out and about. But if you're up at 6.01 on a Monday morning, odds are you are laboring today. Laboring along with us. Yeah. So good morning. Thank you for watching us. Now there is so much going on, but obviously one of the big stories of the day, really the last month, the heat, and it doesn't look like it's stopping anytime soon. It's been so cruel, Sarah. I know. It's been really, really hot all summer. In fact, today will be our 68th 100 degree day in San Antonio. But as you were mentioning, you're either working today and up early, or you're getting to start maybe smoking a brisket or Ooh. something like that. So I've got your grilling forecast for the holiday coming up in just a bit. Outside right now, it is mostly cloudy and 80 degrees. You'll notice a little bit more cloud cover, a little bit more humidity out there, but those are pretty much the only subtle differences in our forecast cast for the day today. Out in New Braunfels, it's mostly cloudy in 79, 76 and cloudy in Seguin. Pleasanton, good morning. You're at 78 degrees right now, partly cloudy skies in Pleasanton. As for the forecast, here's that grilling forecast for you. You know it's going to be a good day when I can put the forecast on burgers and hot dogs. 83 at 10, 91 at noon, 100 for the high temperature today. It is going to be hot. Coming up in the forecast, we are going to take a look at some of our area lake levels uh, and and we'll also take a look at the tropics too, coming up in just a bit. Max and Sarah. Let's take a look outside with the roads this morning. We're really not seeing anyone out there getting a head start at this point. Uh, if you are going to be traveling today, please be safe. And if any incidents pop up, we'll let you know about it. All right, new this morning. You're looking at a live shot right now on the southwest side. San Antonio fire crews investigating what caused a fire at an abandoned home. It happened just before 3.30 this morning on Creighton Avenue. That's near West South Cross Boulevard, and that's also near Dwight Middle School. Firefighters say the fire was in the attic and completely took over the home. Now, luckily, no injuries reported, but it did take a while for investigators to, well, it took a while for firefighters to put out the flames. Right now, investigators, they're still on the scene. They're trying to figure out how this all started. Also new this morning, one man in the hospital and a suspect not in custody after a shooting overnight. So this is what we know right now. It happened at a home in the 1800 block of West Laurel Street, just a few blocks west of I-10, north of downtown. San Antonio police tell us this is not the first time they've been called to this location. An officer says they've been called to the home several times, including once last week. Now, this happened after a 24 year old was asked to leave the home before he refused. That's when police say an argument ensued. Someone at the home pulled out a gun, shot the man in the back. Now, the suspected shooter took off. Police still haven't been able to track him down. At last check, the victim is in critical condition. 
A Northside ISD school board member is facing a charge of driving while intoxicated. Court records show Dr. Carla Durans was arrested over the weekend. Police say she refused a breathalyzer and blood test after she wasn't able to follow the instructions of the field sobriety test. An NISD official says they have no information on the arrest. Stopping your morning headlines, a Labor Day weekend party ended with two men dead, multiple people injured, all of this unfolding in Galveston. Our sister station KPRC in Houston reports two men died, several others injured at a shooting at what was an Airbnb. Now the owner of the Airbnb says this was actually the first time he had even rented it out. Dozens of people at a party at the house and that's when shots started to ring out. We saw chaos. There were kids everywhere and um, just screaming, crying. One kid was laying on the ground and he got taken by ambulance. Detectives haven't yet named the two men who were killed, but their families have been notified. Right now, unclear if there was only one shooter or multiple suspects. And at last check, still no suspects have been arrested. Meanwhile, the Fort Worth community is mourning the loss of Texas Christian University junior Wes Smith, who was shot and killed by an alleged stranger outside of a bar this weekend. So Smith was a past member of the TCU football team and apparently didn't know the suspect who was now facing murder charge warrant says the suspect admitted to shooting and apparently would have shot others if he hadn't run out of ammunition. Now to the manhunt for a convicted killer after he escaped from prison. As ABC's Derek Dennis reports, authorities near Philadelphia, Pennsylvania are telling people to lock their doors after the man was seen on a home surveillance video. This morning, a massive manhunt in the air and on the ground for Pennsylvania prison escapee Danilo Cavalcante on the run since he broke out of the Chester County prison last Thursday morning, at the time considered extremely dangerous. Remain inside, lock your doors, lock your cars. Authorities say Cavalcante escaped exactly one week after he was sentenced to life without parole for the stabbing death of his ex-girlfriend, Deborah Brandau, 38 times in front of her two young children. The search focusing on a rural residential area in suburban Pecopson Township, about 38 miles southwest of Philadelphia and about a mile and a half from the prison. It's where investigators believe he's hiding out. It's a heavily wooded area consisting of over 271 homes and uh, it's not easy for our investigators to get through. Cavalcante was last seen early Saturday on a home surveillance camera tiptoeing through someone's backyard. This was his last spotting, though authorities say there were more than 100 tips related to his possible whereabouts, including a number of home break-ins that Cavalcante may have carried out. I just can't believe it, and I really hope that they catch him soon. I hope everybody's paying attention and locking their doors and staying alert. Prison officials say they're still investigating how Cavalcante escaped, but they don't believe he had any help. In that surveillance video, he was seen with a backpack, though authorities say they don't know how he got it or what's in it. Derek Dennis, ABC News. Before we go to break, Congress now in a race against time, trying to avoid a government shutdown. And really, the finish line is the end of the month. So the Senate and House, they have just a few weeks to resolve major differences over funding of the federal government. Republicans in the House could end up forcing the White House and the Senate to either accept a slew of conservative priorities or risk a government shutdown. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy urging his GOP colleagues to back a short-term spending deal, avoid that shutdown, and would not be the first shutdown we've seen, and probably not the last. Time now, just about 6.08, 79 degrees. So to come, as most of us celebrate Labor Day, there's plenty of labor unrest across several industries. We'll check out strikes going on from Hollywood to America's heartland. And after the break, the Wonder Theater preparing to wow audiences with a new production. Daniela Ibarra takes us into the woods in just a few moments. First 79 degrees to start off our Labor Day Monday morning. Oh, Sarah Spivey says it's going to be another triple digit day, another triple digit week. Is there an end in sight? She'll let us know when we come back. The actors are here rehearsing at the Wonder Theater. They're excited for audiences to come and enjoy the performance, but even more excited for the lessons they'll get to take away. I think 
The beauty of this particular show is that you can walk away with something that hits you. You know, I know there are some cast members who gravitate to a certain song. For me, I love the song No More. And I, I think we've worked so hard that we are very proud of the work that we put into this. And we're very proud of the art that we've all created together. You can see the movie over and over again. And of course, you've got Meryl Streep and Emily Blunt. So it's not like you've got bad actors. But to see it live and feel the energy and like have the music hit you like it's supposed to is a completely different ball game. So definitely want to see it live if you can. For more information on how you can get tickets, go to ksat.com. Reporting in the Deco District, Danielle Ibarra, KSAT 12 News. Well, as most of us celebrate Labor Day, there's plenty of labor unrest across several industries. So, Hollywood writers, actors, they're striking, and as ABC's Morgan Nord reports, the United Auto Workers, they're getting close to walking out as well as talks with car makers don't show a lot of progress. This Labor Day, less than two weeks remain before the United Auto Workers Union could hit the picket lines, possibly adding to what's already been a summer of strikes. 97% of UAW members voted to authorize a strike if a new deal isn't reached with Detroit's three automakers by September 14th. We're fed up with seeing big three profits break the bank while we're breaking our backs. The union is demanding higher wages, improved benefits, and cost of living wage bumps. All this as car manufacturers transition to producing more electric vehicles, which require fewer workers to assemble. This is our time to take back what we're owed. Working together with the companies doesn't work for us. President Biden is calling for a fair agreement, appointing a White House liaison between the union and automakers, hoping to help avert a strike. Studios negotiate! A strike in Detroit would only add to the recent wave of picket lines, from the heartland to Hollywood. More than 170,000 actors and writers have been striking for months. Writers are reportedly considering a new offer from the studios after more than three months of striking. According to Bloomberg News, the concessions include an agreement not not to replace writers with AI. Now, video games are in their crosshairs as SAG-AFTRA prepares to vote on an actor strike against the gaming industry. And back in July, UPS workers narrowly avoided a work stoppage that would have affected 300,000 jobs. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, New York. 79 degrees at 614, and it hasn't been a busy morning on the roads because it's Labor Day, but I know later on today, mm -hmm. once people, you know, maybe sleep in a little bit and then they're starting to head back home from their vacation, then the roads might get a little busy. <laughs> not right now, though. We'll wow. Keep you posted. We'll, we'll keep, keep you posted. posted Literally anything. not anyone on that road. That was yeah, fantastic. Good, good for everyone. Yeah, hopefully people are up watching. We, we've been talking about it. Yeah. It is Labor Day. People putting the brisket on the grill. Absolutely. And you know what? It is going to be a day where we're going to have to watch those backyard barbecues carefully because fire danger is high today. And that's important to remember. Outside right now, it's 80 degrees in San Antonio, 79 in New Braunfels, 72 in Yavette. Valdean in Rock Springs, 79 in Catula. Humidity is higher than it has been the last several mornings. The reason for that, we've had a stout wind coming in from the south, bringing in that Gulf of Mexico moisture. As you step outside today, this morning, you will notice the humidity. Here's the good news. It will come down in the afternoon when it's the hottest. Dew points are expected to fall into the 50s and 60s, so not all that bad this afternoon. It will be hot, but again, We've had to deal with 105 plus degree weather the last couple of months, so shaving off a few degrees from that with a high of 100 really isn't all that bad. Mostly cloudy outside right now, but by 10 we're going to be seeing clearing skies, 83, 91 and mostly sunny around the lunch hour. And then in the afternoon, 100 for that high. If you're planning on having the backyard barbecues and grill outs, have them a little bit later. It won't be too bad with the low humidity. It will still, however, be hot. 99 in Uvalde, 103 Carissa Springs, 102 in Pleasanton, 99 in Kerrville, 100 in Canyon Lake. As we take a look a little bit closer to San Antonio this Labor Day, 98 in Lotus, 99 in Bernie, 101 in Hondo, 101 in New Braunfels. 
100 in comfort. One thing that's going to be interesting today is that the winds are really going to start to pick up in the later half of the day. So we're talking after about 5 p.m. That's when we're going to see wind gusts of up to 25 to even 30 miles per hour. So if you do have those grow outs, keep in mind that you're going to want to weigh things down just because of those gusty winds. So again, after 5 p.m., we'll see wind gusts of up to about 25 to 30 miles per hour at times. Looking at the weather setup across the nation, plenty of rainfall for areas across Idaho, Utah, Nevada. Man, I'm jealous looking at that rain because we just can't eke out any rain here in San Antonio and across Texas. There is a little bit of rain up near the Dallas Fort Worth area from this low pressure system, but this low pressure system is going to book it northeast and it's actually going to be a pretty quiet day to travel across the state today other than a couple of isolated showers across the coast and closer to Houston. Now that low pressure system is also going to create a tunnel for wind gusts and it's going to be a windy day across the state with high fire danger, very high fire danger from Waco up to Dallas, out to Lubbock and into the Panhandle. Here in San Antonio, we expect high fire danger today. There's tons of uh, brown dry fuel out there for these fires, so please use caution. Uh, out toward Del Rio, high fire danger as well with areas across the hill country experiencing even higher fire danger. Take a look at the forecast over the next several days. 100 tomorrow, 100 Wednesday, 100 Thursday. Do you see the pattern? And even by Friday, Saturday, Sunday, our temperatures are going to be even hotter. Now, for the first time in a while, I saw a glimmer of hope for some rain early next week, but that's all it is right now, a glimmer of hope. Things can change in the forecast, and I would hate to give you false hope right now for early next week, when in reality, that heat high is settling over and continuing the drought as well. So I've got to look at local area lake levels coming up in just a bit. A lot of people are going to be out and about trying to enjoy local uh, lakes, but those are very low at the moment. I'll just take false hope at this point. Okay, false hope Sunday, Monday, next okay. week. False hope. <laughs> just something. <laughs> Thank you, sir. False hope. Thank you, Sarah. You know you're going to get emails, right? You said it was going to rain today. If you can blame it on me. Yeah. yeah. Send them to me. It's, not Sarah. It's Sarah Costa. She's it's the problem. It's my fault. It's Time. me. Hi. <laughs> I'm the problem. Time now, 619, 79 degrees. Well, millions of people, they're headed to the beach today, so we're taking a ride along with lifeguards monitoring sharks on the East Coast. That's just ahead and your GMA first look. There it is. That feeling you get when you can do more with less asthma. It starts with Dupixent. Dupixent is not for sudden breathing problems. It's an add-on treatment for specific types of moderate to severe asthma and can help improve lung function for better breathing in as little as two weeks. Dupixent helps prevent asthma attacks and can even reduce or eliminate oral steroids. Can you picture it? Dupixit can cause allergic reactions that can be severe. Get help right away if you have rash, chest pain, worsening shortness of breath, tingling, or numbness in your limbs. Tell your doctor about new or worsening joint aches and pain or a parasitic infection. Don't change or stop asthma medicines, including steroids, without talking to your doctor. Who knows what you can do when you do more with less asthma? Ask your asthma specialist about Dupixit. In this morning's GMA First Look, tracking sharks by air and by water. GMA getting up close access to shark detection operations at New York's Jones Beach using drones to police the waters. I would say hands down the drone has played the most important role in our identification of dangerous marine life. Being able to confirm and see without question um, that there are sharks in the area, it's a game changer. And it's not just by air. Officials are also monitoring waters by jet ski. It gives us a, a different and additional, uh, you know, vantage point to be able to see what's going on in the water. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll tell you what these lifeguards have learned so far and their important tips before you enjoy that Labor Day visit to the beach. With your GMA First Look, I'm Ariel Reshef, ABC News, New York.
Fall season is approaching and pumpkin spice lattes have returned to coffee shop menus across the country. With PSLs being all the rage on social media, it got me thinking, what climate type is best for producing coffee beans that end up becoming your favorite cup of joe? We did some research. Hi, can I get a tall iced pumpkin spice latte? According to Noah, ideal coffee growing conditions include areas that are cool to mildly warm, contain humidity and rich soils, and also have few pests or diseases. Known as the coffee belt, these areas are mostly found along the equator and include North, Central, and South America, the Caribbean, Africa, the Middle East, and Asia. Fun fact, the world's largest coffee producing country is Brazil. Now it's no secret that temperatures have been warming across the globe. I mean, just recently we set the record for the hottest summer ever recorded in San Antonio. Additional warming in the future will present several challenges to coffee cultivation, like accelerating the ripening and development process, which has been known to decrease coffee bean quality. Regardless, whether you take your favorite cup of joe with pumpkin spice and everything nice, just cream and sugar or without anything at all, I hope this gives you a little insight into how weather plays a role in creating your favorite morning beverage. Mia Montgomery, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Mia. In your consumer headlines, a new handheld gaming PC, Lenovo, is introducing the Legion Go to rival the Steam Deck and Nintendo Switch. So Lenovo's device has detachable controllers similar to the switch the go is available next month for seven hundred dollars okay that is a long way from the game boy yes all right speaking of technological advances tesla slashing prices for their model s and model x cars for the third time in just the last year so the s now starts at seventy five thousand dollars the x coming in at eighty thousand this means the x now qualifies for that tax credit under the inflation reduction act all right, time now, almost 627, 79 degrees. Still ahead at 630, there's a lot of new laws in Texas that have gone into effect after this weekend. We're getting you caught up on some important ones, looking to keep roads clear of the street takeovers. Whether you're in schools, you're in the workplace, or out in the open community, we're gonna make sure you have a place, and it's appreciated. So one of the 774 new Texas laws, the Crown Act, the 16-year-old tells us a weight was lifted off her shoulder after the Crown Act became law this weekend, what it means for so many across Texas at schools and in the workplace. Right now on GMSA, San Antonio police investigating a shooting on the city's west side. It ended with one woman in the hospital plus I'm ABC's M. Wynn in Washington. President Biden is now briefed on the Burning Man Festival, which was rained out this weekend, trapping thousands of people in a northern desert in Nevada. The latest coming up. 79 degrees at 630 as we start our Labor Day on this Monday. Sarah Spivey will let us know what our forecast will be like. Here's a hint, it's going to be very hot. All right, good morning, 631 this morning. It is September 4th. It is Labor Day. We know so many people out and about. We got people going to the coast, people at the pool, people starting their barbecues dark and early this morning. That would be nice. Yeah, it would be nice. A little brisket. I would love brisket tacos right now Share for all those viewers out there. your brisket. All right, so Sarah, people <laughs> out and about, what can they expect today? They can expect another hot day, our 68th 100 degree day this year. But again, happy Labor Day. A lot of people are going to be out on the area lakes. And unfortunately, as you know, those area lake levels are very low. Canyon Lake at only 68% full is at its record lowest. Usually Canyon Lake holds pretty steady during these droughts, but that is not been the case. Amistad Reservoir near Del Rio down to 36% full. Medina Lake only 4% full, 86 feet below the conservation pool and Choke Canyon 28% full. So be very careful if you are going to be out on the area lakes today because again those low levels of water expose things that are usually covered with that water. Also be very careful if you're out and about because fire danger will be high today. We want to do our part to avoid creating and spreading grass fires. In San Antonio right now it's 80 degrees. Good morning in New Braunfels where it's 79. Seguin 
Green at 76, Bernie at 73, Kerrville, you're at 75 this morning, and it is noticeably more humid this morning. As overnight, we had a steady south wind that increased our humidity, but this afternoon that humidity will be coming down, and we will not have a heat index value right around the time that we see our highest temperature of 100 today. At 10, it'll be 83, 91 at noon, 100 for the high. South winds at 5 to 15, gusting up to 20. Sun's going to set about uh, 8 o'clock this evening, and it should be a pretty nice night. But all in all, again, high fire danger. Coming up in the forecast, that heat high moves back overhead, and we're going to talk briefly about the tropics as we approach the peak of Atlantic hurricane season. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Let's take a look outside the roads. We do know today is going to be a big travel day, but probably later on because I don't see a lot of traffic out on the roads this morning. We haven't so far fortunately had any major incidents to, to tell you about, but if anything does pop up, we'll let you know about it. All right, new this morning, a woman in the hospital after being shot while she was just driving along a west side San Antonio street. This is what we know right now. It happened around 1030 last night. This is near the intersection of Calabria and North Sabinas. It's not too far from I-10. Police on the scene telling us a woman was driving her pickup truck on Calabria. That's when someone shot through her door. She was hitting both her legs. Two other people inside the pickup truck at the time of the shooting. Now the victim taken to the hospital. No word yet on her condition. No word yet on any arrests either. A 33 year old man is facing charges after Bear County deputies say his dog attacked someone. So deputies were called to a dog attack on Blossom Canyon Saturday near Highway 90 West. When they got there, they spoke with the victim's daughter who says her 68 year old father was attacked by the suspect's dog while he was on a walk. When deputies interviewed the dog owner, he admitted several people had complained about his dog in the past. He's charged with injury to the elderly, causing serious bodily injury. injury. Well, there are hundreds of new laws across the state of Texas, 774 of them to start the month of September, and they cover a variety of different aspects of our lives, school safety, crime, gender, voting, and guns. Governor Greg Abbott and Texas lawmakers, well, they technically passed more than 1,100 bills during the 88th legislature, and as we said, 774 of them are now law. Some of them, though, still going through our court system. Among those, the sweeping school safety bill requires an armed person at every school campus. We have the puppy mill bill that clamps down on dog breeding. Uh, that bill that returns sovereign regulatory powers to the state of Texas over municipalities. That one specifically, that is still going through the courts. And a bill that adjusts sales tax for several health-related and family care products. Another law is outlawing, outlawing race-based hair discrimination in Texas schools and workplaces. So our Avery Everett talking with the, so those who advocated for the law, who say age is just a number that this conversation is far from over. Having the Crown Act passed, I felt like a, like a weight was lifted off of my shoulders, being able to freely express myself. The start of September brings a sigh of relief to 16-year-old Nevea Sage. Growing up as a black girl, um, my hair was always being discriminated against. I've always been um, shied away from wearing my natural hair out in public. House Bill 567 bans race-based hair discrimination at work, in school, and in housing policies across Texas. And it took effect on Friday. Future generations get to grow up in a world where their natural hair isn't described as unprofessional or distracting. They get to embrace it and love it and do whatever they want with it without have being reprimanded. These four San Antonio teenagers are just some of the advocates who pushed for this law. They're all a part of the Lemonade Circle, a nonprofit empowering women of color in South Central Texas. There was a lot of joy and excitement and gratitude to be a part of something. Since 2019, the Crown Act has been a proposal hoping to end hair discrimination for natural protected styles. After this weekend, 23 states have laws in place to do just that. Whether you're in schools, you're in the workplace, or out in the open community, we're going to make sure you have a place. And it's appreciated. Moving forward, the question is, how will this law be implemented at on the ground? They say it's a weekend for celebration. I never thought um, something that we did would impact our, our community this much, but it did. But looking ahead, acknowledging still work to be done. Imagine how big it would be if everybody in San Antonio knew what the Crown Act was, how important it is to not only them, but to their children, to their community. That law took effect across the state on Friday, but those advocates that we spoke with say they want to see this language banning hair discrimination at the city level too as an ordinance. They say that's their next point of action.
action. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. Other new laws address books in schools, transgender issues, fentanyl, workplace violence, and even electric vehicle registration. And speaking of cars, House Bill 1442, that revolves around street racing and street takeovers. So a new law would give law enforcement and prosecutors additional means to combat street races and those dangerous takeovers. Hopefully this will serve as a deterrent uh, and keep people from making the decision to get behind the wheel and engage in this dangerous activity. Officials will now be able to prosecute and even seize vehicles after reckless driving incidents. Now moving on, House Bill 393, that'll help children whose parents were killed in a crash. So technically, it requires drunk drivers who were convicted of intoxication manslaughter to pay child support if parents or under, of underage children were killed in that crash. Now, courts will determine the amount to be paid until the child reaches 18 years old or graduates from high school. And finally, not finally, because there's 774 of them, but one of the notable bills, House Bill 1885, that will allow speed limits to change under certain road conditions. The Texas Transportation Commission will now be able to set different speed limits during bad weather, construction, or even traffic. The speed limits will be based on either an engineering or traffic investigation. Now you can read all about these bills that are now officially state law, at least most of them that aren't navigating the court system. We have all the details. Just head to ksat.com. And one of the new laws here in Texas is making it possible for women to get menstrual products they need for a more affordable price. Since Texas is getting rid of the so-called tampon tax, churches around the Alamo City have been able to set up drives to help those get the products they need. The Temple Bethel Sisterhood recently worked with the diaper bank and ended up collecting more, excuse me, collecting almost $10,000 worth of products and $4,000 in monetary donations. The products will be delivered to different organizations around San Antonio, along with school districts. Having to make those tough decisions, whether I need to buy food, diapers, period supplies. So most mothers are gonna say, well, I'm gonna put my needs last. So if you'd like to help the community, head to ksat.com, where we explain how you can donate and also become a diaper bank client. The developing story, thousands of people still trapped at the Burning Man Festival in Nevada. This in the aftermath of those heavy rains that actually turned the northern desert site into thick, knee-high mud. As ABC's M. Wynn reports, at least one person has died during the rainout event. This morning in the Black Rock Desert of Nevada, unusually late summer rainstorms turned the week-long Burning Man Festival into a muddy mess, leaving tens of thousands of people stranded. The Pershing County Sheriff's Office saying one person has died. That death is under investigation. The torrential downpour forcing partygoers to take shelter this weekend, some trudging through muck with plastic bags on their feet. Revelers were told by officials to conserve food and water. We're running, uh, almost running out of the gasoline, so that's why in the daytime we mostly like stay without uh, electricity. The conditions making traveling in and out of the area unfeasible. This video posted on social media by music producer Diplo shows him hitching a ride out of the festival Saturday with comedian Chris Rock after they walked five miles in the mud out of Burning Man. Despite that, spirits remain high for some partygoers on site. This is the best burn ever. Seriously, like this has given us the opportunity to rise to radical self-reliance and to support each other in the community, and I'm having the best time. <laughs> <laughs> The annual counterculture celebration happening about 100 miles north of Reno attracts nearly 80,000 artists, musicians and activists. Organizers have had to cancel the festival before due to COVID-19 and dust storms. The White House says President Biden is monitoring the situation closely. Burning Man organizers say it's not clear when the roads will be dry enough to navigate, but they say they're hopeful to resume plans for the festival tonight, weather permitting. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. Time now, just about 642, 79 degrees. Just ahead, there's plenty of things to do today for Labor Day and the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center. They want to get your support for the community, what, they've have, what they have planned. That's just in a few moments. Good morning and welcome back. So happening today, it is Labor Day, but you can still help out the community. The South Texas Blood and Tissue Center hosting a Labor Day blood drive, helping relieve blood shortages. And of course, 
honoring Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. It's happening 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Rolling Oaks Mall. Now, the Blood and Tissue Center says donations are always needed, but especially during the holiday time. That's when the community sees a rise in emergencies. 79 degrees at 645. We're going to look out on the roads with our trans guide. Let's see. Are we seeing any people? What's your guess? I, you know, we no. got two. <laughs> we got to No, the, the joke is today is usually the the most traveled holiday of the year. I know the airport is set to break records, but it's still, you know, under 7 a.m. on Labor Day. So not many people yeah. out and about yet. People will be traveling, and honestly, Sarah, I'm surprised more people out on, on the roads trying to beat the heat. Right, and we'll take a look at the road conditions across Texas and whether or not weather will impact parts of Texas in just a bit. But it, it is the big story today is the heat. People trying to be out and about, having to avoid the heat and the fire danger today as well. 80 degrees, though, as you're starting your day. 77 in a Lotus. Good morning in Bandera, where it's 75. 74 in Kerrville. 80 in Canyon Lake. 79 in New Bromford and 77 in Divine. But again, it is humid outside, a little bit more humid than it usually has been the last couple of mornings. That's because overnight we had a stout wind from the south bringing in that Gulf of Mexico moisture. But the good news is if you're trying to enjoy some time outdoors, you won't have to worry about a heat index during the peak heat of the day. Dew points are going to come down in the afternoon. Dew points will be in the 50s. That's in the pleasant category when with a wind from the south, it should feel OK outside, even though, yes, it is still going to be hot with high near 100 77 degrees right around seven in the next uh, few minutes or so mostly cloudy skies out there by now right now but by about 10 we'll start to see skies clear around noon mostly sunny and 91 for the lunch hour 100 for the high temperature this afternoon partly cloudy skies for us it is going to be a hot day today we'll make 68 100 degree days for san antonio this year 2023 is going to go down in the record books is not only the year with the most 100 degree days, but the hottest summer on record too. And this is a look at those high temperatures today as summer comes to an unofficial end. Uh, 101 in, Del uh, in New Braunfels, rather 98 in the Lotus, 100 up in Comfort, 99 in Bernie and Bulverde. Hondo, you'll be at 101 today. 101 in Poteet, 102 Pleasanton, 102 in Floresville, 100 in Seguin, 101 in Gonzales. All right, something to keep in mind today is that fire danger is going to be high. And I I know a lot of people are going to be out and about for grill outs, those kinds of things. But a friendly reminder, no campfires or burn piles today. Just because that fire danger is so high, avoid using tools that create sparks, dispose of cigarettes properly, don't drag trailer chains, and do not park your vehicles on grass because that grass could easily ignite from that hot car. What, as far as weather across the nation goes, this system, which is currently bringing rain to areas in Utah and across parts of the upper Rockies, that may impact air travel. But really around Texas, there's only a low pressure system that's bringing some rain right now to parts of extreme northeast Texas and then a little bit of rain near Houston in isolated rain. So traveling across Texas today should actually be OK. There really may only be a couple of isolated showers along I-10 toward Houston, along 40 up toward Dallas. But otherwise, it is going to be fairly quiet weather-wise around Texas, not only today, but through the week. As that heat high, that big blue bully that brought us the 105 plus degree weather over the summer is going to build back in over Texas in the coming days. What does that mean for us? Well, it means our highs are going to be near 100 every single day of the first full week of September. This is also the time where we start to see the peak of Atlantic hurricane season. And right now it does look like there's an area of low pressure just off of the coast of Africa that will likely develop into a hurricane. And it's expected to right now at least take a turn away from the Gulf of Mexico. We will keep you posted, however, as we're still a little bit of ways away from that even becoming a storm system. Looking ahead to the week, 100 degrees every single day. There is a small glimmer of hope for a change of weather pattern by Sunday and Monday of early next week, but it is a little too early to tell, unfortunately for us. But we'll keep you posted about that. I'm hoping we can see a shakeup because we need a shakeup in the weather. We do. I hope so too. Thank yeah. you, Sarah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sarah. 650, 79 degrees. We'll be right back.
All right, we are coming back with a late breaking news. You're taking a live look at a fire on the city's west side. That's right. This is near the Woodlawn Lake area on West Summit Avenue near Fredericksburg Road. Um, our photographer, our photojournalist Santiago is out there. It looks like fire crews are no longer fighting it defensively. They are inside the home which is usually a good sign that they have that fire under control and they're just kind of looking with their flashlights right now for hot spots. It looks like it is a two story home. Hopefully we don't have any information if anyone was in the home and if they were in the home, if people were able to get out safely, but it definitely looks like they are in the mop up stages of this fire. Just stay with us on air and online as we get more developments throughout the morning. And then happening today, if you're looking for something fun to do with the family, you may want to stop by at the San Antonio Zoo. As long as you go early and beat the heat, the zoo is offering $8 admission a day for all Bear County residents as part of its Locals Day. You can purchase your Locals Day Zoo tickets online. As long as you have proof of Bear County residency, the zoo is open from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. seven days a week. Before we go, a touching and unforgettable moment for the mother of Rob Elementary shooting victim, Maita Rodriguez. So during their San Antonio show this past weekend, the popular Mexican pop rock band Mana called Ana Coronado up to the stage to be honored and serenaded. It was a huge surprise for her, who was clearly both emotional and grateful. She said any honor like this just brings more attention to her for fight to change. Hey. Although she's not here, I am. And I will never stop. I will make sure her legacy continues okay. and I will always fight for her. So she was able to meet the band behind the scenes. Turns out Maita and the band's frontman, they both love turtles. Taking a look outside with Transguide, it has not been a busy morning. I have not seen any incidents <laughs> so far. Fortunately, um, we do know a lot of people will be on the roads. If anything happens, we'll let you know about it. It's going to be a hot Labor Day, 83 at 10, 91 at noon, 100 for the high. High fire danger all day long. In fact, high fire danger all week long as highs each day will be near 100 degrees. The only glimmer for hope for rain is an isolated shower or storm next Sunday, guys. So, yeah, we just need that weather pattern change and it's not coming yet. Well, despite the heat, I hope everyone has a great Labor Day. We'll see you back here at 9 a.m. See you at 9. Good Morning America is next.